Amen. And so the Lord gave us this. We're still standing in, uh, in the series He's given us in, in prayer. Amen. And everything that's going on, uh, God knows how to have everything in His order and in His time. Amen. And so he, he gave us this. He said, Our God provided prayer app. And uh, you think about that. And you see where it says, God brings goodness. And it says, There's an app for that. Well, true, there is an app for God's goodness. There's a way to access God's goodness. And so, uh, like we said, this whole thing came up because of everything we got to get on the telephone in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the flood. The one thing everybody on the news would tell everybody, uh, download our app and get all the information that you need. <laughs> and so, uh, we won't just uh, deal with that today, amen. Our God provide the prayer. And so, it's coming from this scripture. This is our foundation of scripture for the day. Uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. And it just simply says this, In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Amen? And so it's a simple scripture. And these are words that Jesus gave to the disciples, but they also apply to us. He says, In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, he shall receive. And so, right there, and that ties in, we start saying that we actually have a prayer that the Lord has given us. So, whatever we ask and seek in prayer, as long as we believe it, and we have faith in it, then Jesus said we will receive it, and we will obtain it. Amen? And so, as we said before, we live in an app generation. Everybody's saying, you got an app for that? And so, what is an app? In technical terms. It's simply an abbreviation for application software, and that's designed to perform a specific task. And so instead of just saying you got the application software, they shorten it up and call it out. And so the way it's designed, it can run on the internet, it can run on your computer, it can run on your phone, or it can run on any electronic device. And so the, uh, the most focused problem would be on the phone. Too many people don't put them on their computers and their tablets, but everybody wants an app for their phone. And so it, when you deal with an app, it's either pre-installed or it's made available through some distribution of what they call an app store. Google has an app store, Apple has an app store, whatever you want to get, they say, well, go to the app store and you can get it and download it. The thing about this now, it's not a store that you drive to in the mall. <laughs> it's already set up on your phone. You got your Google account or your Apple account. You go to it and you look, you see all these little icons. That's where your candy crush and all this other stuff is on there when they play their game. You just scroll down and download it. And I realize when you download it, it's going to use up some of the data on your phone. And you really don't wonder why your phone's slowing down because you got all these apps on your phone. <laughs> That's all part of it. And so they did some market research some years back and they said there'd be a possibility that there would be uh, 1.2 billion apps downloaded and 91% of them are free. And so that's a lot of apps. 102 million. Now this was probably back in in 2013, so you're talking 2016, uh, it's still over 1 billion apps that's being downloaded. And so they always add apps all the time. And, and what's the thing that Apple does, and what is Samsung does, and all of them do with the iPhone and the smartphone, every time they revise it, they say, we got some more apps added to it. Previous phone had 500 apps, now we got 600 apps. They just added 100 apps and they just slammed the button. And so, this is what the focus that we deal with people today. Everything is is app driven. Amen. And so there are multiple apps for multiple things. And when you deal with the situation, you got them for computers, you got them for your smartphones, you got them for tablets. They are banking apps, they are Bible apps. Everybody, a lot of the time I see now the, the, the ministers and the, the pastors and the preachers, they got the Bible on their phone. But I don't trust. It. I don't. <laughs> on their phone, on their tablet. I, I've seen too many times where the devil can get in that app, in that technical system, he can mess some stuff up. I, I've seen several times where pastors can come with their tablet, and sometimes press the tablet, the screen just freeze up, it won't even come on. Uh, one situation, the pastor came, was trying to get his sermon done, and when he was at the end of the sermon, the screen popped up. Yeah. I mean, uh, one pastor... He was looking at his tablet the whole time. He said, I know I put my sermon in here. He looked at every location, every box he could find.
couldn't find that, that shirt. He said, I know I loaded that thing up on here. And just don't. So that, I, don't, I don't trust dealing with that. Give me my word where I can look at it and I got it in hand. And because it can go out on you. It's booking apps for flights and reservations. There's breaking news apps that all the, the networks have. There's chatting apps where you just get on and just talk to people. Not talking about nothing, but you just chat. You just know it. There's dating apps. There's game apps. There's investment apps. There's media apps and movie apps, social networking apps, and weather apps. And so we got to be careful because we get to the point where sometimes it seems we're getting addicted to these things. And so people are stopping, not socializing, and speaking to one another. And when they run into a problem, the first thing they say, well, do they have an app for that? Well, do they have a medical app to tell me what to take if I got a headache? Or if I got a pain, I need an app on my phone to tell me when I need to take my medicine. I need an app to wake me up, an app to remind me to go to sleep, or an app to remind me when lunchtime is, or when I'm supposed to take my 15-minute break. You're getting too dependent on electronic things. And so we deal with this, we talk about God's prayer app. And what does this app do? It's an app that prompts and provides. Now what every app does, you, you go to the icon, you click on it, and you, you prompt it to go to it because you see it on the screen. And it provides you with some service. And so what does prompt mean? It means it, it brings it about, it encourages it, it inspires it, it motivates it, it stimulates and it triggers. And so every phone has an app on it. You go to that icon, you, click on it, it triggers and it sends you to something. It also means it provides something. That means this. It means it bestows, it endows, it furnishes, it imparts, it grants, it presents or it offers. So if you go to the Channel 9 app, weather app, you go to the weather app, you're not looking for sports. You're looking for weather. It's going to give you where the hurricanes are. It's going to give you what the rain forecast is. It's going to tell you how hot it is. That's what a weather app does. And so you don't go to a movie app to get a weather forecast. But that's the thing about the apps. Each app is specific. It only focuses on a certain thing. Yeah. Only focuses on a, form, on a certain thing. So it's, it's concise in what it does. It can't do everything. It can't do everything. But that's the difference. Prayer can do everything. Yeah. And so that there was some open call our God provided prayer facts. Fact number one, and the scripture you've said this already. Prayer to God is an all things application. And notice I said prayer to God. Just, people pray, but they don't always pray to God. They pray to false idols and those kind of things that really can't hear. But prayer to God, it says it's an all things application. And so all things mean this. Anything, everything. <laughs> and I saw this, I thought about uh, this, this thing, what is the whole thing? What was one of these TV shows? I can't believe I ate the whole thing whole thing, daily things, as many as, and it's thoroughly covering everything. So there's not anything that prayer doesn't cover. And, and so that's why we have to understand a lot of times, and, and Deacon, you said, we've heard the old folks say this, well, if you go to them for the big things, go to them for the little things too. A lot of times we feel, well, oh, that's, that's too small to bother God with. Well, you don't bother them with it, give it to them when it's small. Don't wait till it get big. <laughs> and then you get in trouble. Because then you have a problem. Fact number two, and I, and I like the way God explains this. Prayer to God is a whatsoever application. And so, whatsoever means is it addresses the other, it addresses some, it addresses that, it addresses the what, the which, and the who. So it doesn't matter whatsoever it is, prayer got it. And so God said, you, you're not dealing with a situation where you say, well, if you're dealing with a weather situation, you need a weather app. If you're dealing with a, 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 a GPS situation where you're trying to get direction, you need a GPS app. Everything in prayer, whatever it is, is covered. Yeah. It doesn't matter. How many times have we been somewhere, even from a, a GPS standpoint, and I know the ladies, they always say it's about the men. Why don't you just stop in that direction? <laughs> And sometimes, I, I, I know where I'm going, I know people don't know, and you kind of see it, y'all don't recognize it. Sometimes we go like this, oh, he's going to get out of this situation. <laughs> and the devil says, Lord, let me, please let me find the next street so I ain't got to stop and ask nobody. That's prayer. <laughs> and then what happened? That, that street right there, I ain't got to ask nobody. See the street 
you right there. All we have to do is just go a little bit further. And sometimes we run into that too. We want to, we, 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 we think we're going to get there. And they say, why don't you turn now? No, they say we got to go three miles. But it looks like you would have went further than three miles. And then you turn around. I heard it many times. You turn around and go back and ask somebody. And then they say, well, where were you coming from? Well, well you were not maybe a half a mile away. If you had just went, went a little bit further, you would have made it. And so, sometimes that we're dealing with. And so, what's what it pertains to? And, and know what it pertains All that, as long as, as many as, as much as, the that ever, the more, and the those. And so, when you start saying all that, as much as you can address, as many things that you can think of that will get that will prayer covers. Yeah. So, in essence, it gets to the point, there are things that you can't think of that prayer covers. There are things that you haven't even focused on yet that prayer covers. And so prayer addresses everything. And so knowing when God says all things, it means it don't matter what it is, who it is, where it is, what the prayer covers. Fact number three, and I like this, is prayer to God is an internal to eternal application. Uh, you notice with your apps, it only works in a certain place. You can't pull your app off your phone or your computer and think it's going to work. And then sometimes the app only works with certain software and certain phones. So a lot of times you're not going to get Mac applications to work on Microsoft computers. If you got a, a Microsoft computer, you have to get Microsoft or Google Apps. If you got an Apple computer, you got to get out and laugh. They're not compatible. They, they, they so if you're dependent on what you use, it only focuses and only can be used with a certain thing. When you're dealing with prayer, it's an eternal thing that stretches from inside the heart. That we say it connects your heart to heaven. Yes. You know, there are, there are no such thing. When you see where AT&T had those problems doing the well, and they, everybody was saying they couldn't get their calls through. <laughs> and those people got mad and upset. You notice what they did. How many of y'all got the little uh, notice or text that from what was it, April 15th to August, August 28th? Yeah. They were going to give you free, unlimited. Uh, and nobody did that because they're trying to get out of heaven and give you some money back. Yeah. Yeah. Not having that time. And so, when you're dealing with prayer, prayer stretches from here and our heart all the way to glory. You can't. Get AT and T or Sprint or Verizon and think you will get in touch with God in heaven. Ain't gonna happen. He can do it, but the way it's set up, you and after one of the, you don't have to go through them to get to Him. God has it where the straight line between you and Him. And, 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 it's, and the funny thing about this, thank you, Holy Ghost, is wireless. So long before man came up with a wireless system, God already had it in place. So man is lagging behind. They keep saying, well, we've come up with new technology. No, God already did it already. You, you don't see no phone line stretching all the way from the ground, all the way to heaven. You're not holding a can like we had a whole we were playing as young kids with a, with a string on the end and a, a string dropped down from heaven. We say, Lord, I want to talk to you. <laughs> it's wireless because God has placed it from our heart to heaven. The other thing about prayer that God gives in our prayer, it communicates your righteous request to God, to the glorious rich reservoir. In other words, he says, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. And so notice how it is. When it's the right request, I have to go back to the catalog. If you order the wrong thing out of the catalog, they'll send it to you. <laughs> now what some of them do, they'll say, we just want to verify your request that you just said you want to, to order so and so and so and so, and then you verify yes. But if you give them the wrong catalog number, and it gets to your house, and sometimes you can give them the catalog number, but somebody messes it up when it gets to the system, and they don't send you the right thing. How many times y'all had that happen? You, you get something and you're like, what is this? I didn't order this, or what is it, ladies? You order it, uh, navy blue. <laughs> And then they see you dark blue. <laughs> that ain't the same thing. 
for many of the guys thought blue, navy blue is just blue. Ladies, navy blue and dark blue are two different things. Purple and whatever shade of purple y'all have. Beige and all white are two different things. For us, it's just a color of white. It's just an ocean. It don't matter. And so, God has set it up where we can access everything He has in glory. Everything. And so, apps can't do that. Apps can only access what they've been designed to access. If it's well, it's well. If it's sports, it's sports. Whatever God has in His, his glorious reservoir, His riches in His kingdom, through prayer we have access to it. Back forward. Prayer to God is a download and upload program. See, man, they, they came up with all of this, but they run it behind. God has already done it. And so, you notice, you bow down in prayer to God, and God bestows down provisions to you. You bow down, God sends down. What's the download process? Hit the download button, it downloads it to your screen. So it's basically, you send for something, it gets sent to you. Man wants to say they came up with that technological process. No, God already had it in place. And we do it all the time through prayer. The other thing about it, you render up prayer to God, and God raises up power to you. That's upload. You know when you upload something to your system? It's to either improve your system or make it better. And so, notice what he's saying. You render up prayer to him, and he raises power in you. Whenever we bow down in prayer, most people wait till we're in a, a dire strait or dire situation. But it's always this case. Once we bow down, when we get up, we feel better. When we get up, we get strength. That's how we get strength. And so we, we, we plug in the prayer to get the power that we need when we get wore down. Prayer basically is our fueling station. You go to the gas station, you fuel up, you put the nozzle in your tank. Once we get filled up and your tank is full, you're not worried because you know you have what you need to make it a little bit full. Back five. Prayer to God is a prepared and prescribed application. Remember we said a lot of times certain ap applications come already installed on your phone? When we're born, prayer has already been set up for us. God already has a system in place. But the thing is, you can have an app on your phone, but if you don't activate it, you never get to use it. And so there's a lot of applications that people have on their phone that they never use. They never access it. And so God is giving you what you need, but if you don't access it, you can't get back with Him. And so, prepare means this. It means it's been made ready, and it's been put together in advance. Prayer is already there. We got here. Prayer is already here. Describe means this. It's been, a, it's been approved and recommended in advance. Scripture tells us this. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. And notice what it says. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So that means it's already been put in place. When the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus already had the word of prayer already prepared in him. He said, when you pray, say, our Father. Yes. And so he taught us how to pray. So the model prayer that we use to teach our children to pray. That's the prayer that God sent down to us so that it covers everything that we need to cover. And that is a simple package. And that is a simple application. It addresses everything. Yes. It addresses our food. It addresses our shelter. It addresses us being protected. It addresses forgiveness. It addresses His glory being brought into our lives. All of those things are addressed in prayer. Fact six. And this is really important. Prayer to God is a preemptive application. And preemptive means this. It means it's a blocking. It's, it's, a, it's a defense mechanism. It's a preventative mechanism. It's a tactical tool. It protects us against the adversary and adversity. And so who's the adversary and who and what is the adversity? You're talking about Satan, and you see this word a lot now, y'all. Uh, surrogates and his schemes. Whenever they talk about a certain candidate on the Republican side, 
the people that are speaking out for him and support what he says, you know what they call him? Sheriffs. In other words, they like, whatever he says, they're going to support it, they're going to restate it, and they're going to stand there and defend it, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. Basically, they're his runners. They do whatever he tells them to do. And so look at what the scripture says when we deal about preemptive application. You hear that word preemptive a lot of times in the military. A preemptive strike, that means to stop something else from happening. To try to prevent some other problems from coming into play. And so in Matthew 26, 41, the Amplified Bible version says this. All of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious, and act, and watch and pray, that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is what Jesus told his disciples when he was going to Gethsemane to pray before he went to Calvary. Notice, and so he's going to pray before he has to be crucified and go up against those who want to kill him, knowing he's going to die. He's getting ready to take on all the sins of the world. And so what Jesus did, thank you, Holy Ghost, that was a preemptive prayer for a preemptive action because he went to the cross he died for us so we wouldn't have to go to the cross and die for those sins. And so because he stepped in, he was the defense. He was the one that block was supposed to happen to us. It was a tactical thing that God had put in place to save us. And so before he goes to Calvary, notice what he does. He prays. He prays and he gets strength from the prayer. But he also said the prayer also helps us to see that which is a temptation, that which is right, that which is wrong. In other words, the prayer is our counseling system. The prayer is our security system. The prayer is our alarm system. Back seven. Prayer to God is a 100% free application. Now, every application is not free. Sometimes you've got to pay to give it. Now, this is the kicker. They tell you that they're free. But you ever notice there's a little, uh, what, terms of use that you have to agree or disagree to? But they always tell you it's a free app. But the condition of a free application is that you're going to start getting all these emails from all these different companies. And they say they're going to send you cookies. <laughs> but you got to be careful. Because some of the cookies can be a virus. And they say it, but it's free. Yeah. And so, so, so notice, even though they say it's free, there's a condition to it. You're going to get some things that you didn't really ask for. Yeah. And so notice what, what God is saying with, the, with his prayer. And, and, and they, the, the phone companies, all of them are trying to do this. So the call is free. The chat is free, and a lot of times the chat lines say, well, your first call is free. Yeah. Or the first hour is free. Yeah. Then after that, you get that fine print that you can't read. That says it's going to cost you $2 a minute for every minute you stay on the line after that. <laughs> the communication is free. The confession is free. God don't charge us to say, Lord, please forgive me, I'm sorry. The connection is free, and you hear this all the time when you hear the lawyer say, the, counsel, the first consultation is free with the lawyers, but God, consultation with him is free. It never costs you anything, and the consultation is free. In other words, he's going to be your doctor, he's going to be your healer, he's not going to charge you that for it. It's not like you go to the doctor at night and you pay your copay, or you go to the dentist and you go in, and after you go in and come out, then they want their money. Now some of them want their money beforehand. Oh, you won't give a 50% now? Well, I don't know if I'm going to give you 50% because that's not that done anything to my teeth. I'm not going to give you some money and then you go hold it. <laughs> and then you mess up on something. But notice, everything when we deal with it, prayer is free. You never hear God say, well, look, what you getting ready to ask me for? Well, Lord, I need to have a consultation about an issue of that. Well, you know, just like all those psychiatrists and counselors, that going to cost you $80 an hour. Well, I'm God. The good ones cost you 135, but I'm God. I'm better than anybody, so it'll run you about a thousand. 
And that was some of your prosperity pe- preachers do. You want to hear it? <laughs> like Reverend Sam used to say? <laughs> For five dollars, I'll send you a prosperity plan, which includes my prosperity napkin and my prosperity all. And you always just say this, but remember people, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. If you don't send me nothing, I'm up to, I won't send you anything. And so notice, God has set up prayer where it doesn't cost us anything. We don't have to buy a phone. We don't have to sign a two-year contract. We don't have a change over feet. We don't have a thing now where people data get used up because they have a data overload and get charged for going over the data plan. None of that. We can call God, talk to God as long as we want to talk to Him, anytime we want to Him, as much as we want to talk to Him, and it doesn't cost us anything. All we have to do, and the wonderful thing about this, is not a touch activation thing, it's voice activated. All we have to do is say, Father, <laughs> I stretch. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> that, that, that's it. And it is activated. His voice activated. You don't have to worry about going to the touch screen and hope the touch screen hadn't frozen up on you. Or touch the wrong thing on the screen and go somewhere where you don't have to worry about going. It's all been set in place. And the wonderful thing about it, it recognizes your voice. It's a personal activation system. So when Rachel calls, God knows it's Rachel. He doesn't confuse it for me. He said that with the phone. Well, I thought that was you on the other line. They call you. But they sounded just like, they sounded just like Steve. I thought they were friends. I, well, I didn't call you. <laughs> with God, that mistake is made. That doesn't, that doesn't happen with prayer. And so we're going to conclude with this. And I remember I said it always has an agreement <laughs> that set up when you have an app. This is the agreement for the app that we're dealing with God. Agree to and comply with these prayer app scriptures that the Lord has given us. He just, he just a few. It's not all of them. Psalm 55, 16 and 17 says this. And for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me evening and morning and at noon when I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Y'all remember the old song, the old folks were saying in the church? I call him in the morning, call him in the noonday, call him in the midnight hour, I call him any time I want. That's what he got that from. Luke 18 is what Jesus said. He said also Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always to pray and not to turn coward or faint or lose heart and give up. You know sometimes you have an app and the app starts acting up? Yeah. And you get frustrated. And what do you do? You uninstall it. Or, if it messes up the phone, some people just get another phone. I'm getting another phone. These days don't work. The mess- you don't have to worry about that with God. Yeah. They say this in Acts 6 and 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the Word. That's what we have to deal with. Give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the Word. Why? Because when we have a constant connection like that, God works with us and God strengthens us. Amen? And so that's what we deal with. A prayer that God has given. And so, this is what we want to recommend. Get your God-provided prayer out rewards. And so everything has a reward system. The credit card has a reward phone system has rewards and everything offers you a reward system somehow. These are the rewards that we get through prayer. We get access, we get answers, we get assistance, and we get blessings, all that comes from God. We get confirmation, we get His counsel, we get deliverance, and we get direction from Him. We get edification, that means we get built up. We get education, that means we get knowledge. We get favor and fulfillment, all that comes through prayer. We get His grace, we get His guidance, we get His healing, we get His help, and we get His hope. We get insight, inspiration, joy, kindness, and love. All this comes through prayer. We get mercy, we get nurturing, we get observation, 
and we get provision. When we need it, we call it. He provides. We get quicker than that means he refreshes us, he revives us, he resuscitates us. That's where we get our second wind from. It means we get quietness in the midst of all the troubles. Most people say, blessed quiet, it's holy quiet. We get renewal, we get revelation, we get strength, we get surety, we get treasures, and most of all, we get triumph. How do we win? How do we get victory? We get it through prayer. And so if we're going to have faith and believing after that man developed to find dating after to get us with the perfect person to get the person that we're trying to meet to, to set us up with the perfect job to get us in the perfect place to find a perfect hotel to get the perfect reservation and we depend upon those apps and God has given us one that covers all of that and all we have to do is call him and you never have to worry about the line being busy or getting put on hold or call away or sent to a system. If you want to talk to God now, press one. <laughs> if you want to leave a message with God, press two. Yeah. If you're not sure you want to talk to God, press three. No, <laughs> if you're calling to intercede for someone else, press four. Yeah. If it's none of these other things, wait for an operator to call on somebody and let you know what God's doing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about all that. When you talk to God and pray. And so, access, use, have faith in, and receive. And we're saying, but your God provided prayer every day. 